Hi everyone, I'm Nick Olivo, and today we're going to see how to set up our own class features, feats, and spells in Roll20's D&D 5th Edition character sheet. And this is great if you homebrew something or if you buy a third-party product from a site like DMs Guild and you want to get that content into your game. And really there are two ways we can go about doing this. The first can be done by anybody, where you directly key information into the character sheet. And the second approach uses a mod called Chat Set Atra to pump information into the character sheet via a macro or a text-based command. And that approach will require a pro account. But I'll cover both of these approaches during the course of the video. Before we dive in, I'd just like to thank Roll20 for sponsoring this video. Alright, let's get started. The first thing we're going to see is how to add a new class feature to our sheet. So let's say we're playing a bard. And our bard has just hit level 3 and wants to be a member of the College of the Mariachi as described in this PDF. And incidentally, this PDF is available for free on DMs Guild, link down in the video description. So we're going to come in to the Features and Traits section of our character sheet. And the first thing we're going to do is click this plus sign. And this is where we can enter in our new class feature. Now we want to add this Grito feature here. So we're going to type in the name Grito. The source is, are you getting this from your character's ancestry? Is it coming from a feat? Is it something from their background? Is it a magic item? Or is it from some other source, like maybe an epic boon given directly from a deity? But for our purposes right now, we're going to select class. And we're going to say that this is a bard third level feature. And then we're just going to copy and paste the text from the PDF into the features and traits section here. Now you'll notice when I did that, the line breaks went kind of wonky. And this is a common problem when you copy and paste from a PDF. But there is a really easy way to fix this. If we pop out to this website, Text Fixer, I'll put a link down to this in the video description, we can paste in our text and then tell it to remove our line breaks and then it fixes the text up for us. We can then copy that, jump back in Roll20, paste it in, and there we go, now everything looks great. With all that done, we're gonna click this cog and that closes up the editor and we are good to go. And just like a standard class ability, you can click on the name to collapse it, you can click on the word bubble to send the information to chat, and you can click on the cog to edit the information in case you realized you made a mistake. And at this point, we'd go through and we'd do the exact same thing for any other class feature we wanted to add. Feats work exactly the same way. In fact, the only difference is you're going to choose feet from the source here. So I've got my feet called Art Forger, and we'll say for source that would be my fourth level feet. And then we just paste in whatever text that the feet has. For spells, that's a little bit different. So let's say we want to add this spell that I just made up called Bane of the Troll Blooded. All right, so what we're going to do is go over to the Spells tab. And we see this is a second level transmutation. So under the second level spell section here on the character sheet, I'm going to click on the plus icon. And then that pops up this empty template for where I can fill in information about the spell. So I'm just going to copy and paste my stuff here. So the spell's name is Bane of the Troll Blooded. The school is transmutation. It's not a ritual. Casting time is one action. The range is self. So we don't need to worry about targets. Components, we need verbal and somatic, but not material. So we'll uncheck that. It does require concentration up to one minute. The spell casting ability, in this case for a bard, would be charisma, but we would just select whichever one of these made sense for whatever character we were playing. If this was an innate spell, like if it was an Asimar's ability to cast light or a Drow's ability to cast fairy fire or darkness, then we would specify that it was an at-will ability or once a day or something like that. But because this is not innate, we're just going to leave it alone. And then output, do we want this to show up as a spell card or as an attack? And you can see an example of each of these if you look at some other spells. So a spell card output is like Comprehend Languages, where you have this description of what the spell is all about. And an attack 
is going to look more like a regular attack roll. And that's what we're doing here. We're making attack rolls, so we're going to switch this to be attack. Now, when you select attack, you notice some additional fields come live here. And so what kind of a spell attack is this? Well, the spell here says that it is a melee spell attack. And we see that our first type of damage here is going to be 1d6 of fire damage. And then the spell also deals 1d6 acid damage. So we're going to put in 1d6 acid. There's no saving throw involved in this. There's no higher level damage stuff going on. You know, like if you were using magic missile and you upcast, you get more darts. You could fill that in here, but that's not going on. And then we're just going to put in the text of the spell into the description. And then finally, the class, so this would be a bard spell. Honestly, I haven't found a use for type. I, I looked through a lot of the spells from the player's handbook and from Kobold Press's Deep Magic, and I didn't see any of them that had that filled in, so we can just leave that one blank and we'll call it good. And then we click Done. All right, so now if we go back to the core page, you're going to see that it's automatically added Bane of the Troll Blooded to our attacks and spellcasting section. So we can just click on that. And we can see that it has made an attack roll. And if I click on the name here to roll damage, we see that we dealt four points of fire damage and five points of acid damage. And the spell is working properly. So now let's see how we can do this automatically with the chat set at Tremod. And again, from this point forward, you will need a pro account to do what I'm about to show you. Chat set Atra is part of the Roll20 mod library, so you can just search for it. By coming in here and selecting Chatset Atra. Chatset Atra was developed by a user named Jacob. Jacob, thank you so much. This script is awesome and it has become one of the core scripts that I use in every single one of my games. So once we've got the script loaded up here, we can click Add Script. That will add it to our game, restart our API sandbox, and then we can start using it. Now, to illustrate the actual command we'll be using, I've got my trusty Notepad++ window here. And so let's start out with exclamation point set Atra. That means we are setting attributes for a particular character or characters. And then we have these double braces. And what this means is everything that is enclosed between these two braces is part of the set Atra command. So everything from line one down through line seven is part of the set Atra command. So the first thing we're gonna do is say that whatever we're doing, applies to the selected token. That's what dash dash SEL means. And in this case, that's going to be the token for my bard, Fledora. The next line, line three, repeating traits create name means we are going to create a new entry here in the features and traits section with the name my new feature. So like down here, when we put in Art Forger and Greedo, this is that same name field. And then right here, create source. So this is where we're saying where this particular feature came from. Is it your class? Is it a feat? Is it a magic item? And we're going to say class. We're going to use the exact same entry as we had in that dropdown field. Then create source type. So we'll say this is a bard sixth level ability, right? Just like we said earlier that it was a bard third level feature or a fourth level feat that we selected. And then finally create description is where you specify the description of the class feature or feat, whatever it is that you're setting up here. So I can just copy this, make sure that my character's token is selected and then paste it into my chat window here. And then when I press enter, it's automatically added that information into my character sheet. So we have my new feature, the source is class, it's bard six level, and here is where my description goes. And I'll put this code down in the video description so you can just copy and paste it and then tweak it to whatever entry that you want to create. Now, setting up spells with chat set Atra is a little bit more involved. So I'm going to scoop my notepad window over here and my character sheet over here. And then let's jump back to the spells tab because I'm going to want to have the new spell template open here while we talk about the fields. So the first thing I want to call your attention to is that this set Atra command is all on one line. It looks like it breaks because I have word wrap turned on. But if I turn that off, you see that all that text, that entire command is all on a single line. That is important. This does not wrap down to line two. I flip word wrap back on, it's a whole lot easier to read, but it's important to keep this all on one line. And I'll explain why in just a minute, but just 
I, I can't stress this one enough, folks. Make sure you've got all of this command on a single line in order for it to work properly. Now, just like before, we're starting out with a set attribute command and dash dash sell, so we're working with the selected token. I'm saying replace here because if we already have a spell named my spell, I want to replace that. And then we have this dash dash repeating spell three. What this means is we are going to add this spell into the third level slot section. So if we were creating a second level spell, this would be repeating underscore spell dash two. If it was a fourth level spell, it would be repeating underscore spell dash four and, and so on. So create spell name, that's the name of the spell. Create spell school, conjuration, abjuration, whatever it is that the spell belongs to. And then create spell casting time. So that's this field right here. That would be one action. Range is going to be self. And then ability, you see that it is slash at intelligence mod plus. So that's where you're going to select from the drop down here what ability it is. So you don't say intelligence. You don't say dexterity. You say slash at and then intelligence mod, charisma mod, whatever it is that you use for your spell casting ability. Here, create spell comp underscore V. This is saying if there are verbal components to the spell. And we set that to V equals one if we want the verbal box to be checked. S equals one if we want the somatic box to be checked. And M equals one if we want the material components to be checked. I don't want material components, so I'm gonna set that to zero. And when that creates this entry, it will uncheck the material components box. Okay, now I'm gonna scoot this out a little bit more so it's a little easier to read. There we go. Spell concentration, concentration equals one. That means we are going to check the concentration box. Spell duration, it's gonna fill in the duration field. That's gonna be one minute. Spell output, that's gonna be the attack or spell card option. We're gonna choose attack. That's gonna give us those other fields. We're gonna say that the spell attack type is melee. The damage for our first damage type, spell damage is called 1d6, that'll be cold. Spell damage two, which is this one right here, that's gonna be 1d6 necrotic. And then the description will be my cool spell description. So if I select all this, copy it, and again, let's make sure that our bard's token is still selected, it is. Jump back into the chat window here. We'll paste this in and enter. And if we go into our character sheet, we can see now that we have my spell. It is conjuration, one action, self with the verbal and somatic boxes ticked. The concentration box is ticked. We got our spell casting ability of intelligence. It's an attack, melee, 1d6 cold, 1d6 necrotic, and my cool spell description is written right here. So to circle back on why we didn't use the double braces here to let us have all of these individual elements on their own line, well, the reason is when you look at this entry right here, you see how we are setting component V to brace brace V equals one, closing brace, closing brace. When the command encountered these closing braces, it would treat them as if they were these closing braces and it wouldn't actually complete the command. Now there are ways around that either by modifying the source code for chat set Atra or by using other meta scripts to manipulate how this data is parsed, but that makes it a lot more involved. I may do a video on something like that in the future, but I was trying to keep this as simple as possible. Again, I'm going to put the code for this down in the video description so you can just copy and paste it and treat it like a template for your own stuff. But again, all this has to be on a single line in order for it to work successfully. Now, at this point, you may be saying to yourself, hey, Nick, there were fields in the spell template that I want to fill out that you didn't use. How do I know how to refer to those? No problem, I got you covered. What you wanna do is come out to this web page, which again, I'll put down in the video description, and you're gonna scroll almost all the way down to the bottom until you get to the section called Spells in General. And in this section, you can see a list of all the spell attribute names over here on the right. So like right here, spell name, that corresponds to the spell name that you see right here. Spell school is here, that's this one right here. So like I didn't use spell ritual, you could use that. And really it's just a matter of saying create underscore and then 
the name of the attribute. So create underscore spell school, create underscore spell ritual, create underscore spell comp underscore materials. So you can use this page to figure out exactly what spell attributes you want to call, put those into your set attribute command, and you're good to go. Now one final thought before we close out today, and that is automate intelligently. What I mean by that is if you have one player who's going to play a bard of the College of the Mariachi, it's probably just easier to copy and paste the text right from the PDF into their character sheet and call it a day. But if you've got yourself a budding mariachi band with a whole bunch of bards in that same game, then by all means put it in with chat set Atra because you'll save yourself a lot of copy and paste work. Same thing with the spells. If one of your players has a homebrew spell that you want to let them use, let them enter it into their character sheet directly. But if you've got a spell that multiple players or maybe multiple parties across multiple games are going to use, then it probably makes sense to set that up with chat set Atra so you can just pop it onto their character sheets and then get rolling. I'd also like to give a quick shout out of thanks to Keith Curtis, Jaron, and Timma for helping me troubleshoot when this wasn't working the way I was expecting. Thank you very much, gentlemen. I really appreciate the help. And I'd also like to give another quick shout out of thanks to Jacob for writing Chat Set Atra. It really is a fantastic script. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing. And until next time, folks, have a great day.